Okay, so today what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about buffer solution. We're talking about buffer. Now, let's say I have a beaker with acetic acid. If I dump in some hydrochloric acid in this beaker, what happens to the pH? The pH will go down, right? I have a solution. I'm dumping hydrochloric acid, a strong acid. The pH will go down. Now, let's say I have this beaker and I dump in some NaOH. What happens to the pH? The pH will go up. So if I have a solution, if I dump in hydrochloric acid, if I dump in any kind of acid, the pH will go down. And if I dump in base, the pH will go up. So the pH will change if I dump in acid or base. Now, your body pH. Did you know that your body pH is between 7.2 to 7.4? Now, if you eat some acidic food, do you think the pH will change? If you consume some basic food, do you think the pH will change? What do you think? No. If the pH of your body changes too much, if it goes outside this 7.2 to 7.4, you will die. So the pH of our body doesn't change regardless of what food you consume. Why is that? The reason is because it's buffered. The reason is because our blood pH is buffered. So what is a buffer solution? What is a buffer solution? A buffer solution, basically what it does, it resists changes in pH when acid or base are added to them. So the solution that the pH will not change if you add acid or base to this solution. Now this is due, and this is where this is all come together. This is due to, you get ready for this, common ion effect, which we talked about at last lecture. So the pH buffer solution is a solution that if I dump in um, acid to it, the pH is not going to change much. If I dump in a bucket of NaOH to it, base to it, the pH is not going to change much. It resists the changes in pH. And the reason it does that is because of the common ion effect. Now we'll talk about exactly how that works. Now buffer solutions are made from two things, okay? So the way you would have a buffer solution, you would have a buffer solution if and this is key, you will have a buffer solution if you have a weak acid and its conjugate base and is, because remember we talked about if you have a weak acid, the conjugate is basic, right? Or, so you could have a weak acid and its conjugate, or what do you think, weak base and its conjugate and if I have a weak base the conjugate is acidic right we talked about it in the last lecture conjugate acid so this is how you're going to have a buffer buffer are made from these two buffer solution are made from weak acid and its conjugate or weak base and its conjugate that's what they're made from okay so far, so good. Now, let's do some practice and see if you could identify what's the buffer solution, okay? Let's see if you could identify a buffer solution. So, let's do some practice. I want to see if you would be able to identify a buffer solution. Um, ammonia. and ammonium chloride C 
CH3COOH and NaCH3COO. Okay. HPR and NABR. Um, let me give you a couple more. Okay, next one is HF and NAF. One last one. Last one is HF and, um, actually, hold on. I think I'm going to give you a different one. I'm going to give you H. I want to, what I'm going to give you, undo that. Okay. I want to give you H, NO2, and Na, NO3. All right. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause my video and then go over each one and figure out would that be a buffer solution or that would not be a buffer solution. Okay. Now let's go over it together. So I have ammonia. Ammonia is NH3 and ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride is NH4Cl. And we talked about that before. The Cl is just a counter ion. It doesn't really make a difference. But ammonium, so when you have NH4Cl, when you have ammonium chloride, what you really have is what? You have ammonium plus one and Cl minus. Cl minus is not going to do anything. Is not one of the common ion. Is a counter ion in this to counterbalance it. Now let's look at ammonium and ammonia. So ammonia is a weak base. Do you agree? Okay. So ammonia is a weak base. Ammonia is a weak base. So the first requirement is met, which you have to be a weak base or weak acid. The second one, you have to have the conjugate of it. Is ammonium the conjugate acid of ammonia? Yeah, this is the conjugate of ammonia. So I have a weak base and I have this conjugate. So what does that mean? Yes, this is a buffer solution. Let's go to the next one. Acidic acid, CH3COOH, we talked about that. That's acidic acid. Is that a weak acid? It sure is. So this is a weak acid. That's good. Is this conjugate of acidic acid? It is, right? The conjugate is after they lose the hydrogen. This is the acidic hydrogen we said in um, acidic acid. This is a fancy way to write it. So over here, this one, it lost the hydrogen. So this is the conjugate, as, uh, conjugate base of acidic acid. Again, how about sodium? Sodium is a spectator. Is there as a counter ion to counterbalance it? Okay, so is this a buffer? It sure is. I have a weak acid and I have this conjugate. Let's go to the next one. HBr, what is HBr? Immediately you're gonna say HBr is a strong acid. If you have a strong acid, it doesn't even fit the first requirement, right? It doesn't even fit the first requirement. So no, this is not a buffer solution. It doesn't even fit the requirement. It's a strong acid. You have to have a weak acid or weak base to be a buffer. All right, next one, hydrofluoric acid. What do you think? Is that a strong acid or weak acid? It's a weak acid, that's good. That means our first requirement is being met. Now, is NAF the conjugate of that? What do you think? Yes, it is. You know that, right? Because again, NAF is really what? Is Na plus and F minus, right? And F minus is the conjugate of HF. So this is absolutely, what happened? This is absolutely a buffer problem. Now, next one. Again, if you, if you haven't gotten right so far, don't feel bad, but pause the video and redo the last one because now that I've explained it, I think you, you got this down. Um, 
HNO2 is that a weak acid or a strong acid? It's a weak acid. So that's great that it's a weak acid. That means it fits the first requirement. Now, NaNO3, is that the conjugate of HNO2? It is not. Check this out. If I have HNO2, if HNO2 would lose the hydrogen, if I have if I have HNO2, what would be the conjugate of HNO2? It would be NO2 minus. This would be the conjugate of HNO2. Do you agree? Now, what do I give you over here? I give you NaNO3. NO3 is not the conjugate of HNO2. So not only you have to have a weak acid or base, you have to have its conjugate. This is not the conjugate of that. So this is not a buffer solution. This is not a buffer solution. So now that you know what a buffer solution is, so you have to have a weak acid or weak base, okay? You have to have a weak acid or weak base and its conjugate in order to, to be an, um, a buffer. Now, what do we want to do now? We want to know now that you know how to make an acid, how to make a buffer solution, we want to know why buffer, why buffer would resist the pH change? Why would it actually resist the pH change? And that's what I'm going to explain to you right now. Let's say I have hydrofluoric acid, is a weak acid, so it would hydrolyze to H plus and F minus. Okay. Now remember what we talked about, and this part is this this part is important. If I have a weak acid like hydrofluoric acid, it partially dissociates into H plus and F minus. But if you remember, we said that the percent dissociation is really low, so you don't you don't have you don't have much. Uh, let me actually write that down. We do not have not much F minus is in the solution. You don't have much F minus going on. It's not enough to actually make a buffer solution. So then what I'm gonna do right now, I'm going to add, so I have this hydrofluoric solution, I'm going to add NaF to HF solution. I wanna explain this one more time because this part is very critical that I have a hydrofluoric acid solution. Hydrofluoric acid solution is a weak acid. And we said if you have a weak acid, not much actually dissociates, right? The percent dissociation is very low. Some of it, maybe 1% would break up, but mostly is together. So that 1% is not much F minus to act like a buffer solution. So what we will have to do, we will have to add sodium fluoride to the HF solution. Now, if you have that, now what do I have? Now I have a weak acid and I have F minus because remember sodium fluoride is Na plus and F minus. Okay, now I have that. Now I have the conjugate and I have a weak acid. So now we are in a pretty good shape. This is a buffer pair. This is a buffer pair because we have a good amount of each one because we have a good amount of each one sounds good so we have a good and I want to mention that because that's key we have a good amount of HF and F minus if we have a good amount of HF and F minus then we have a good buffer solution okay now let's go back to our original question which was, how does this buffer solution help? So I have hydrofluoric acid goes back and forth to H plus and F minus. And remember what we just said. We said we had a good amount of hydrofluoric acid and we have a good amount of F minus. We have a good amount of both of these together, right? We have a good amount of HF and F minus, so we have a buffer solution. So now how does this kind of work? This is how this is gonna work. If I add an acid to this, if I add an acid to this buffer solution, remember F minus, now that I have a good amount of it, F minus 
reacts like a base, right? Because you have a minus charge. You have a minus charge, you act like a base. So if I add, if I add acid to this solution, the base, this is a conjugate base. This is gonna act like a conjugate base. This conjugate base, this base is going to neutralize the acid that I just added. Now, what happens if I add a base to this? Well, if I add a base to this, remember, I have a good amount of hydrofluoric acid in that solution. So if I add a base to it, the hydrofluoric acid would neutralize out the added base. So if I add acid, this will take care of it. If I add base, this will take care of it. So this is how a buffer solution works. It will neutralize the acid and base added, so the pH will not change. But what you need, you need a weak acid or base and it's conjugate. Now, I said that, now I say versus if I had hydrochloric acid. If I have hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid, right? And a strong acid means it would have a 100% dissociation. What I would end up with is H plus and Cl minus, right? Now, remember what we talked about before, and we've talked about this before. Cl minus is that basic? Remember, the last, the last problem I just did, this one, the F minus is definitely basic, right? This is definitely basic because it's a conjugate of a weak acid. It has a minus charge and is basic. As a conjugate of a weak acid is usually basic, right? If I have a weak acid, the conjugate is basic. I want to write that down because we talked about this last week. So if I have a weak acid, it would have the conjugate would be basic. We talked about that. Now here, I have a strong acid. If you remember, if I have a strong acid, what's going to happen to the conjugate? If I have a strong acid, what's going to happen to the conjugate? The conjugate is going to be neutral. Cl minus is like a salt, NaCl. This is neutral. This is not basic. This is neutral. This is not basic. So, if I have a strong acid, it will completely dissociate into H plus and Cl minus. Cl minus is not basic, is neutral. So if I add any acid to this, Cl minus will not be able to neutralize it out. It will not be able to neutralize it out, so it could not act like a buffer solution. This is why I need a weak, um, weak acid and its conjugate to have a buffer solution. So far, so good? Okay. Now, what I'm gonna leave you with, I'm gonna leave you with a practice problem. Here's a practice problem that has two parts. What is the pH of a 0.20 molar hydrofluoric solution the Ka is 7.2 times 10 to the minus 4, okay? And the second part is what is the pH of a solution that is 0 0.20 molar in HF and 0 0.10 molar in sodium fluoride. Okay, so what I wanted you guys to do, I want you to do these two take home problems. I'm gonna consider these take home problems. Even though technically we are we're home all the time, but it's still. So take on problems, and next time, the first thing we're gonna do before I start the lecture, we're gonna go over this. All right, nice job. We are done with the buffer, we'll be done with the concept of buffer, and we're gonna do, keep doing more practice problems with it. 
Don't forget, do the take-home problem. I'll talk to you guys next time.